Dear friends, during the past days, we have received a lot of uh, phone calls and a lot of emails uh, where you were telling us that this year you're not going to be able to come to visit the winery because of uh, the circumstances that we're living. But uh, we don't want you to miss anything. This is why uh, we came up with the idea of making this virtual visit so uh, you can learn about the history and the legacy of this family. So today I'm going to be your guide. Come with me. I always like to start my visits in this little corner. This is a corner dedicated to Cuba. And you may think, uh, what does this uh, relate with uh, wine production here in Spain? Well, uh, although we were vine growers in the 16th century, we did not put the name of our wines until 1870. And this was thanks to a man, uh, to a young man called Jaime Torres. He was born in the, in the Torres family. Uh, but at the beginning, he did not want to be a winemaker. He wanted to see the world. That's why he decided to embark on a boat that would take him to Cuba. And in Cuba, he was working, uh, he worked very, very hard for many years until he got enough money to buy a small share of this boat, of the Bergantin Eva. Huh? Uh, this was a boat that would allow him to uh, buy wine in Barcelona and to uh, ship this wine into the city of La Habana. And uh, well, this is uh, how the business started. After many, many years of doing that, uh, he got uh, tired of all these trips and then he met his brother, Miguel Torres. He was still in Villafranca del Penedes uh, and then they decided to join forces and they started the winery. And this was on 1870, long time ago. A lot of people that come to the Torres winery fall in love uh, with this uh, little car. This is a Renault 44 and uh, used to be the car of my grandfather. Uh, he used this car to go around, to visit restaurants, to sell wine, but also to go through the paths of the Penedès and around Catalonia in order to find vine growers that would sell him the grapes so that he could make uh, wine. And I can tell you this is a great car. It still works after many years. Here in the winery, we have a great collection of uh, old pictures that can take you through the history of Torres. Probably, and talking about uh, difficult times, the most dramatic picture that we have is this one of our winery, uh, totally destroyed in 1939 during the Spanish Civil War. Uh, some airplanes were trying to bomb the train station that was very close to our winery, but the bombs uh, failed to, to go to a train station and they all went to our winery. So everything was destroyed, but my grandfather was brave enough uh, to ask some money to the bank and to continue uh, again, rebuilding the winery and making wine again. From all the utensils that were used uh, in the past, both in the vineyard and in the winery, maybe the one that I like the most is this uh, massive press from the 18th century. This press uh, was uh, moved by animals uh, that they were moving that vertical screw on one side of the press. This big piece of wood was moving and was pressing both uh, grapes or could press also uh, olives. And uh, then the juice was filtered through these ropes to get in this vase. We have this great collection of uh, ancient amphoras from the Roman times. To me, each of these pieces uh, proves the history of wine in the Mediterranean. Uh, on those times, these amphoras were filled with Spanish wine from Tarragona, from the Penedès, and they were transported through the sea to Rome. Uh, on those times, it was very fashionable to drink uh, imported wine. This is the most ancient piece that we have in the Torres family. It's a cratera from the fourth century before Christ. And in those times, they used to mix the wine with uh, salt water from the Mediterranean, but also with uh, some honey, uh, with some spices. And I can tell you that probably those wines did not have a great taste. But uh, even on those times, they were already enjoying wine. It is very interesting to understand the history of our wines through the labels. Uh, Spanish wines were not very well known until the Second World War. Uh, during the Second World War, uh, France was invaded and so they could not export their wine. So there was a great demand for wine around the world. And my grandfather was uh, smart enough to go uh, and to travel a lot and to showcase uh, his own wines. I love these old labels. There was a lot of work with the typography, with the papers, and they really show character and personality.
Well, the part that I like the most uh, in the visit is the walk around the vineyards of Massa Plana. These vineyards were planted in the year 64, 65, and it's very ancient Cabernet Sauvignon with very deep roots now. It's a, it's a great vineyard and every single one of these vines, of these very old vines to me is like a sculpture. So to me, it's like walking in a museum, but uh, outside. It's something very unique and very precious. For any great wine, the most important thing is to have a great vineyard. And that means uh, understanding the soils, understanding the climate, the varieties that you're going to plant, the people that is going to take care of this vineyard, and the environment in general. I'm a great defensor of uh, promoting the biodiversity in the vineyards. Here, for example, in Massa Plana, this is an organic vineyard, 100% certified. And now I'm close to this insectory where uh, we have insects that help to promote the balance uh, and to not use chemicals in the vineyard. But we also have uh, bees to help the pollinization. We have a lot of birds also, sheep that uh, they produce the compost that we're going to use afterwards in the vineyard. Anyway, it's again, it's very important to keep this, this balance. I always feel that when a vineyard is balanced, is when really expresses the essence, when uh, expresses with words, uh, through wine, the message that wants to give. To understand uh, a wine like Mas La Plana, it's very important to understand that uh, this wine comes from a single vineyard. It's a single vineyard of 29 hectares. And inside that vineyard, we can find different uh, kind of parcels uh, with a slightly different soil, sometimes with more gravel, sometimes with more clay, sometimes more calcareous. When it comes to harvest time, we harvest it in a different moment, just when that parcel, when those grapes are perfectly ripe. And then the grapes come, come here. We select them by hand. And then after a gentle crush, we put them in these different uh, buds. The important thing is that nature gives us uh, always like an excellent gift that is uh, these precious grapes. So the key thing to remember always is that the great wines are made in the vineyard. So the most important thing is not to make mistakes here and just let the wine express by itself. Uh, now we are in the aging wine cellar for the single vineyard wines. And it's a very unique place. Um, it's, uh, there's a lot of silence, it's, it's very cold, the right temperature to age uh, our wines. Here, uh, the wine is going to go through a process of aging, of microoxidation, of integration with this, uh, with this wood that uh, will make the wine more elegant and to have more finesse. It feels special because uh, it's a place where we see the work of the last uh, two or sometimes three years uh, waiting here. And, uh, and it's very unique, it's very special to us. So we come to the last part of the visit where we open bottles of wine and we enjoy them. So you can find these wines that I selected in many online uh, wine stores. So here's my selection, uh, Masa Plana from the Penedes, a wine to understand the Torres family, very important, great wine. Then from Conca de Barberá, our Grands Murallas, made with five different varieties, Garnacha, Cariñena, Monastrell, Garro and Carol, Catalan and ancestral varieties. Very Mediterranean wine, great wine. A wine that I drink a lot, Purgatori from Costes de Segre, Garnacha, Cariñena and a little bit of Syrah. A great wine with a lot of fruit that I enjoy very much. And uh, this is the wine that I'm drinking right now, Mas de la Rosa from the Priorat, from a single vineyard of 1.9 hectares very heroic vineyards in slopes and with a slate uh, soil. It's a magical place and this really reflects into the wine. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today this visit. Uh, I hope that at home you can open a lot of bottles of wine. This is uh, time to drink wine, it's time to celebrate and to celebrate every single day. Salud!